Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 30th of June, last day of the month. And uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe I'll try to go to weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us into the second half of uh, July now, I think. So I'll get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video to say was... 6am UK weather forecast and also release the EC 30 day forecast with the UK and the rest of Europe as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's content and thank you so very much everybody for doing that. Right, so we're going to start off in the uh, tropical Atlantic. We now have Tropical Storm Brett. Here we go. Uh, tropical Storm Brett has been uh, named by National Hurricane Centre and another disturbance area following hot on Brett Seal. So let's do it with that one. First of all, that is Disturbance 1 with a 70% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and an 80% chance of high chance in the next uh, five days. They're saying uh, showers and thunderstorms are gradually showing signs of organisation in association with a tropical wave located several hundred miles southwest of the Cape of Verde Islands. Their environmental conditions appear conducive for further development of this system and a tropical depression will likely form during the next couple of days while the system moves westward at 10 to 50 mile an hour across the eastern, eastern and central tropical Atlantic. Wow, wow, wow. And then we've also got, as I say, Tropical Storm Brett giving maximum sustained winds of 40 mile an hour with a minimum surface pressure of 1,008 millibars, moving at 17 mile per hour, clicking on Brett and going here. We can see that uh, Brett is forecast to become a short-lived hurricane. Uh, around the middle part of the week, there we go to Category 1 status there, before we're going back to a tropical storm as it carries on eastwards to the south of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Does that have Jamaica's name on it? If it curves in that direction, it could have Cuba's name on it. We should wait and see. If it goes any further than that, it could have Florida's name on it. Again, we should wait and see what happens. But these are very, very early days to be seeing uh, this kind of activity in the tropical Atlantic. And remember, we have got a developing El Nino going on as well. So, um, you know, it's all happening. You would think the El Nino would be dampening down um, the tropical storm and hurricane activity in the Atlantic. But at the same time, we've got a very, very warm uh, Atlantic sea surface temperature uh, going on, particularly through the tropical and subtropical Atlantic and northwards around the UK and Ireland as well. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to wait and see how this all works out. But we're certainly off to quite a, quite a significant start to this year's tropical storm and hurricane season. Bear in mind, it's only the 20th of June and uh, we won't be at peak season until like September and uh, October. Wow, wow, wow. We'll keep you posted. Right, central temperature is currently sitting at 16.6, which is 2.5 degrees above 61 to 990 average. That's provisional to yesterday to the 19th of June. Very, very warm June so far. And that's set to continue as well. These were GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles. That could wait on Oxford today, the red line. Is the first year of the air temperature average for Oxford starting up above average at the moment, staying above average through the next few days, becoming hot over the weekend. Another little push of heat coming up over the weekend. We'll get temperature back to 30 degrees probably. Then a drop, but still relatively warm as we come towards month's end. However, through the first week of June, we find that the upper air temperatures are returning closer to average base. So, uh, first week of July, I should say, we find that the upper air temperatures are reverting closer to average. So we could be in for cool down into the start of July. Precipitation wise, but a showery burst to come over the next couple of days. Then things going drier for a while over the weekend. Um, and then as we get through into the first week of July, then it does look a little bit more definitively unsettled as well, to be honest. Temperature anomaly is from the 20th of June to 28th above average, not just the UK and Ireland, but through most parts of Europe too. And precipitation anomaly is from the 20th of 28th of June. Wetter than average for more central, northern and western areas. Uh, driving average in the south. We've got some of that could be down to this morning's heavy rain and thunder. So we'll see how these anomaly charts are looking tomorrow when today's wet weather is taken out of the 
you know, out of the scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, from Earth Nosgul. Up next shows that we've got Trough of Low still sitting close to the country. Various secondary features rotating around that thundery trough that's sitting generally to the north and west of us. Right, all important chart data then. Mr. Avalanche's UK bet Euro run is looking for big night on Friday. High pressure reaching up from the southwest. Big risk from the Azores taking over into the weekend, bringing lots of dry, fine, warm, probably hot weather to the south and the east over the weekend. Upper air temps looking very warm to hot. By the time we get through to midnight on Monday, the high pressure just retreating a little bit further east was allowing a weather system to push across the country that could bring some rain with it and then cooler air flows along behind from the Atlantic on those westerly winds. How much of that cooler air we get down to the south, I'm not sure because we keep this ridge going across the south. That's again the Azores high uh, ridging into the south. So that should keep southern counties mostly dry and very warm even into the beginning of next week. The northwest does look a little bit cooler. And a little bit more showery though. I can't again building up that ridge of high pressure on Friday. That brings us into a dry and very warm to a locally hot weekend for the south and the southeast this weekend. Meanwhile, further north and west, so low pressure coming in off the Atlantic will bring some showery birth. By the beginning of next week, uh, we have pushed some cooler, fresher air through for the north. Not sure how much of that we get through into the south because this ridge continues. Uh, down across southern counties, continue to bring lots of dry and very warm weather with that area of high pressure extending up from the Azores into the south. Locally hot, so I would have thought, down in the south, a little bit cooler and fresher further north. But GFS midnight run, or much of much this for, fri uh, for Friday, building up that area of high pressure that takes over into the weekend. High pressure sits over to the east of the country, very warm to hot southerly, southeasterly air streams uh, pushing up from the south. Until right Sunday to Monday, and then this weather system going to cross the country could bring some rain with it and introduce cooler air from off the Atlantic to all parts. Early part of next week, the high pressure tries to reach back in from the Atlantic. As we go through to the end of next week and to months end, signs of a bit of a change. Low pressure coming up from the south. That's a thundery low with another area of low pressure out in the Atlantic. Look what happens. <laughs> they combine for the first day of July to bring. Um, well, what do you make of that? Like an autumnal dartboard low um, for the first day of July. That looks very strange, doesn't it? How that low pressure blows up. So um, the GFS midnight run turns wet and windy and really quite cool for the opening day of July. That dartboard low sitting around the country into the 2nd of July as well. Beyond that, we start to reach high pressure and warmer air back up into uh, the south. So that cooler, uh, wet and windy weather doesn't last all that long. But if it came off, it would be very noticeable. That is like a, a spell of summer gales there. GFS 6Z again builds up that high pressure from the southwest on Friday. High pressure takes over and sits to the east of the country into the weekend, pulling up very warm to hot air. In most areas where we have got a cold front coming in off the Atlantic that might trigger some sort of fungi breakdown in the course of Sunday. Look how warm the upper air temperatures are. I think we'll be hitting 30 degrees this weekend. Then that's the cold front and the area of road pressure pushes across the country. Difficult to say how active that will be. Probably brings uh, some rain to the north. I doubt there'll be all that much down in the south, but we need to wait to a little bit closer to the time frame. Upper air temperatures become cooler. And then we go on up to day 9 and 10 with low pressure out to the west. Uh, certainly not looking overly stormy, but it does turn more unsettled for the beginning of July. This is day 11 with low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. Again, not stormy, but it is unsettled with showers and long spells of rain. The most cooler, unsettled conditions take us through the first week. Of July then, 6th of July as far as we get to uh, with uh, today's uh, GFS runs. And again, you see it looks quite unsettled, particularly for the North and West, but not exclusively so. Even down in the South, we would be getting some wet and windy weather with that. If you're enjoying this video, please you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for giving me that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't get to tell friends about Gow's Web. We thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. We need to put on a Around another 30 subscribers to get ourselves to seven to get ourselves to 16.4k. We are ultimately grinding to uh, 17k subscribers, of course. If you could give us a sub, 
It would be amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. GM, again, the high pressure rising up from the southwest. I'm probably bringing lots of dry and warm weather. With it, that high pressure sticks close to the south and east country through the weekend. Keeping things very warm, probably hot for some of the eastern areas. A little bit cooler and more unsettled out in the uh, northwest of the country. Then heading on into next week. So the south remains mostly dry and very warm under the area of high pressure for north. Could be a little bit more showery. Up to day 10, northwesterly to westerly winds. Rather showery in the northwest, mostly dry down in the south. And uh, temperatures should be relatively warm across the southern parts of the country as well. And then the ECM WF rounds it all off that area of high pressure building up from southwest on Friday to give us a very warm uh, spell over the weekend, especially in the south and east and northwest. We'll turn a little bit more unsettled through the weekend as this area of low pressure edges in from off the Atlantic. By the beginning of next week, we are looking cooler and fresher. Probably main dry down south. Could be a fungi breakdown further north, followed by showers off the Atlantic. And then heading on into next week, well, the south probably stays mostly dry and quite warm. The north will be cooler and more showery by day 10, which is the 30th of June. We're all looking rather cool and showery then in most northwesterly winds. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So... There are going to be some showery bursts, particularly from the north and west over next few days. The south should be mostly dry, though, with that area of high pressure for much of the time. Of course, it will turn very warm to hot into the weekend. Free to next week, well, showery rain for the central north part of the country, mostly dry, though, down in the southern and south east of part of the country. That's how we can get day 10 with showery conditions in the north and northwest, but mostly dry down in the south. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 30th of June. 14 members of the ECM Ensembles including the operational run with road pressure to the north and uh, northeast country. High pressure out in the Atlantic. Winds coming in from the northwesterly direction. So rather cool and showering at day 10 with that uh, option. As I said, it does include the operational run. We've got another 10 with a uh, deeper area of low pressure just to the west of the country. That could be similar to what the GFS Midnight Run was doing, actually. Possibly turning a little bit stormy there. Uh, another 9 with low pressure in from the Atlantic. High pressure pulled out to our uh, west. Winds again coming in coming in on the northwest southeast alignment. 7, low pressure more or less over top. Country 6 with low pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, high pressure out in the Atlantic. Uh, and then 5 with high pressure out to our west, low pressure to our east. And winds coming in from a northerly direction. Most of those options look unsettled at day 10. So the very end of June, beginning of July, I think we are getting increasing evidence here, increasing signs that the weather could be on the turn for the end of the month and into the start of July, especially in two week time. These are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 5th of July. 18 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our north and northeast. That brings in a rather cool and showery northwesterly flow. Uh, another, uh, um, we've got 13 here. So that's 18 there. 13 here with low pressure right over top of the country, more or less. So that's cool and unsettled. 7, low pressure just out to our west. That also looking quite unsettled. Uh, another seven drier with high pressure over to the east of Turkey. Should be mostly dry, quite warm with that. And six with high pressure again sat over and to the east of the country. They are the two drier options for seven. Number six number six there. However, the 18, the 13 and the seven there uh, are forming a um, strong majority option to be unsettled in uh, two-week time. So this opening part of July could be seeing a change here. Might not be temporary, but we could be seeing a change. CFSB2, finally, these are 500 millibar height and is breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 20th, 26th of June. The coming week has high pressure over and to the east of the country. Low pressure is out to west. Winds coming up from a very warm southerly direction. Week 2 sees the high pressure breaking down a bit. It's 27th of June. 3rd of July, high pressure slipping southwards, low pressure forming to the north west of Scotland, winds going in to a west, a return of the westerlies, if you like. Week 3 will be the 4th to the 10th of July, with low pressure 
over and to the westerly country. Again, bring him a win from the westerly southwest direction. Up quite unsettled. And week four rounds is all off. It's the 11th, 17th of July with low pressure part more or so top of the country. We've got a ridge over on the east side of Europe. That brings hotter air up the eastern side of Europe. We've also got high pressure in the North Atlantic towards Greenland, which will force cooler air into that area of low pressure. So, to be honest, uh, the CFS wants... And it's a bit of a change from the CFS, I have to say. So, how soon as we take it, I don't know. It could look different tomorrow. But today, the CFS actually wants things to be rather cool and unsettled as we go into... Um, you know, as we go into July and, and run through it. That gets to the 17th, but we're still looking quite cool and unsettled there. It's all speculation. It's all food for four, and I wouldn't necessarily be overly concerned about July's weather prospects at the moment. Big change on what we've had in June. So let's wait and see how things play out. Anyway, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please tell you like, share, subscribe, thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Worthies and get them to subscribe too. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. You're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We'll have the excellent USA forecast. going to be a little bonus video tomorrow as well, looking at the JMA season model for July, August, and September. And then we'll be live streaming our 10 to 14 day. So we'll do everything that we've done here on this 10 to 14 day. The only difference is that rather than a video upload, we'll do it live. And that will all be kicking off from, from around 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. You enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.